Inanga breed in the upper tidal zone of rivers and streams, and I've come with Julie Geritzliner from a Department of Conservation to take a closer look. So this is the kind of area where Inanga uh, spawn. The male and the female fish come in the big shoals. It's on a spring tide when um, the river will be much higher. The eggs will be laid in the, in the grasses along the side. Okay. And then the tide will recede, and then the next spring tide would come up again, and then those eggs would get washed out to sea. At sea, the eggs hatch, and after about six months, the young fish get a sniff of fresh water and make their way back up the river. And if they're lucky enough to escape our nets and other predators, they'll grow into adults. While inanga are the most common of the five species of whitebait, the kokapu is the most mysterious. The best way to spot them is at night, and we've been joined by Doug Kens, who along with Julie, is monitoring the adult whitebait. We're still finding out exactly where they live. We don't actually know where they spawn yet. It's never been observed. Here's one there, look at that one. Oh, yeah. It looks a fatty. Is that quite an old one? I haven't seen them much bigger than that. Hey, go back a little bit. Down here? Yes, yeah, see there. Oh, look at that. There's a little one. Nicely done. What'd you get, Doug? Yep. Oh, it looks like a banded. Yeah. The information Julie and Doug gather will help Doc to better understand and protect the precious whitebait fishery. It's ironic that the future of that fishery and the huge culture that surrounds it lies in the likes of the simple roadside drain. At least that guy will help keep the white bait numbers up. Know how I'm done. <laughs>